The film is based on George Barr McCutcheon's book Brewster's Millions, which was previously adopted into a well-known 1985 film starring John Candy and Richard Pryor. Hello, Mr. Billionaire. A Chinese comedy film is directed by Peng Damo and Yan Fei. This unruly satirical comedy from China takes aim at the conspicuous consumption of the country's novel rich by trying to make their lifestyles look vulgar. Shen Teng reunites with Goodbye Mr. Loser directors Peng Damo and Yan Fei to play Do Yu, a shoddy goalkeeper in a hopeless football team. Out of the blue, Do Yu's rich uncle offers to make him heir to his vast fortune but only if he can spend 1 billion yuan in a month or 144 million US dollars. A pathetic minor league soccer goalkeeper was given a task to spend 1 billion in 30 days. His good friend Zhuang Chang gets roped into the spending spree while Xia Zhu is the accountant keeping tabs on his expenses. However, he is not allowed to tell anyone about the task and he must not own any valuables by end of it. Do Yu has to spend it legally and isn't allowed to have any assets to show for it at the end of the task. If Do Yu will become successful, he gets to inherit his grand uncle's 30 billion yuan worth of assets. The biggest problem of all, however, is that Do Yu is not allowed to tell anyone about the task, which create a lot of confusions to the people around him. He is also faced with the evil trustee company's bosses who desperately need him to fail in order to control the management of these huge assets. Do Yu gives the challenge his best shot. He sponsors Kakamami schemes in a sequence that parodies the popular reality television program Chinese Dream Show. He then rented the most luxurious hotel for a month with all expense paid. His clothes are all rented and not any of his belongings. The haircut is worth 1 billion. He even got securities to be paid and as everyone around him claims to have a dream that needs funding. Of course, things do not go smoothly for him. Thus, the character in the film was not allowed to spend money on philanthropy, drugs, gambling, or the purchase and destruction of expensive pieces of art, all things the government and its censors frown upon. Instead, the character invests in unfinished property, garbage stocks, and hopeless innovations. To his surprise and chagrin, all the investments make positive returns through whimsical circumstances, doubling his initial billion. Even the most outlandish ideas end up generating more money, and suddenly spending 1 billion yuan does not seem like such an easy task. He even gave his money without the second thought. He even raises an event wherein people need to lose fat and calories in their body and the weight loses to them is equivalent of a money. And people are dazed into it and support his program. In a way, the movie tries to have its cake and eat it too. It glorifies the most conspicuous of consumption, showing that money can buy the most delectable cuisine, the most luxurious accommodations, and even a private concert by a music star with Wang Li Hong, making a cameo. But then it delivers a message about the importance of remaining untainted by wealth, not the most palatable turnaround. The restrictions his uncle places on him, he can't give any of the money away, for instance, make this very difficult to do, and Do Yu has to resort to some crazy schemes to divest himself of the cash. The film was a smash hit in China earlier this year, but not all viewers thought it's funny. Many found its scenes of untrammeled wealth and luxury objectionable rather than satirical, serving more as a reminder of China's expanding wealth gap than a criticism of it. The enduring popularity of the premise could have something to do with the seductive fantasy of getting rich quick and the corollary thought. People definitely would not have a problem spending all that money. The film is very well made and funny enough, but it does send a mixed message about wealth. 
For although Hello Mr. Billionaire's intention is to make the rich look unworthy, all the newly rich characters seem to be having a fabulous time. Any attempt, therefore, to promote values of civility and humility over those of greed and avarice falls a bit flat. All in all, at the end of the story, if we relate it into our real life, money could make us rich, happy, and maybe contented. But in the case of taking away of one's life for the greediness, it's a different story to tell. We will always come to a decision wherein you will balance the importance of having a good relationship with other people without any hindrances and being conditional rather than having something and turns everyone into a stranger because of the wealth and money they have. We all should realize that living your dreams even in the simplest way could make your life a better one instead of living a dream that's full of selfishness and avarice. I am Fibo and we hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video. Thank you and goodbye.